staff at Cajon Valley Union School District asked to take down posters promoting an LGBTQ organization. Coming up what the superintendent told me today. Caught on camera thieves stealing gas in the middle of the night. We're going to hear from a victim plus tips to protect yourself. With the popularity of pickleball on the rise, we'll tell you about the latest push for more pickleball courts in San Diego. Not everyone can afford running shoes. Why a cross country coach is the heart and soul of Monte Vista High. And is the U.S. getting rid of paper money and going digital? We verify. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Controversy is taking over the Cajon Valley Union School Board meeting right now after the superintendent told staff to take down posters promoting an LGBTQ organization. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan. Marcella is off tonight. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. That meeting started an hour ago. CBS 8's Shannon Handy is live outside with what's happening right now, as well as some background on this issue. Shannon. Carlo and Jesse, that meeting is taking place in the building here behind me. Dozens of people have shown up to speak about this issue, which is not an agenda item, so they will have to wait until public comment, which hasn't started yet. Now, at issue, the superintendent sent a video to staff members yesterday telling them they had to take a poster down, which promoted an outside LGBTQ organization because he says that poster violates board policy. Based on conversations I've had with many of you, I know the following announcement will not land well with many and may be perceived as a step backwards. This is a video that sparked controversy within the Cajon Valley Union School District. Running nearly seven minutes long, Superintendent Dr. David Miyashiro sent it to staff members yesterday, informing them posters promoting an outside LGBTQ organization called Gleason had to be taken down. The Cajon Valley Governing Board has directed staff to remove Gleason safe space posters from student facing walls which violate board policy by soliciting funds or services for an organization and position the district on any side of a controversial issue. Since its release, CBSA has received several emails from both parents and staff upset over the poster's removal. One counselor said board members have been going into classrooms and taking them down, adding, as a counselor, what are we supposed to do? Get rid of our signage and not letting this be a safe place? Kids come into our office because of the safe place sign. Everyone is welcome. I asked Dr. Mia Shiro about those concerns today. If you don't want them to go to an outside group, do they have resources here within the district? Yeah, and that was the primary concern of the governing board. We have over 60 counselors. We have school staff that are trained. And we don't want our kids going outside where we can't monitor and control for their safety. Dr. Miyashiro explained instead of marginalizing groups, the district wants to celebrate each individual person. So while promoting outside groups isn't allowed in certain settings, he says symbols, pictures, and other meaningful items are. We do have so many LGBTQ staff that we love and cherish and we want them to continue to share their pictures of their families and their loved ones and their affiliations just in their workspaces. So if a teacher wanted to put the gay pride flag on their desk, would that be okay? Of course. Regarding how this issue came about in the first place, he says a board member brought the posters to his attention, telling him they violated board policy. While Dr. Miyashiro did not name the board member, Anthony Carnavali, who was just elected last year, has criticized Gleason in the past, including just four days ago on his public Facebook page. I reached out to him today, but have not heard back. And this is expected to be a very long meeting. Richard Allen is inside and we'll have a report at 10 and 11. If you'd like to see the superintendent's entire video message, you can find that on our website. Just go to cbsa.com and click on this story. Jesse and Carlo. Shannon, speaking of that video message, in it the superintendent talked about AAPI Heritage Month and stopping Asian hate. What's the connection there? Yeah, Jesse, he used it as context. Basically, what he was saying is that in this district in particular, they don't celebrate AAPI Heritage Month or Black History Month. They do talk about it in their curriculum. He says celebrating things, pinpointing them, is essentially marginalizing other groups. And that is one of the reasons why the board says these posters have to be taken down because you are excluding other groups while including certain ones. All right, an interesting debate going on there. As you mentioned, Shannon Richard Allen inside continuing our coverage for the e late evening shows tonight. Shannon Handy live for us on this tonight. Shannon, thank you.
Hundreds of migrants are gathering at the border tonight. This is video from along the fence in San Isidro. We've seen the number of people gathering there going up for weeks. The American Friends Service Committee San Diego says they've been giving food and water out since Saturday. Officials are asking people to use the CBP app to start the asylum seeking process, but immigration rights advocates say many don't have smartphones. A new proposal aims to expand the amount of child care options available across San Diego. The San Diego County Board of Supervisors unanimously passed a measure today. The child care blueprint would use existing federal funds to increase capacity at daycares, improve training and staffing, and expand access for underserved communities. According to the plan, 77% of San Diego parents struggle to find child care. CBS 8 has been working for you to investigate the city of San Diego's public utilities department. We told you about billions of gallons of water wasted because of problems with the Lake Hodges Dam. Tonight, we're turning our attention to El Capitan Resort Reservoir. Our David Gobertson is looking into why jet skis aren't allowed on the water there anymore. These were the good old days on El Capitan Reservoir in the East County for award-winning jet skier, Steve Gordanker. This was a, a very special place to the personal watercraft community. Probably been coming here for 35 years. But all that fun stopped when the city of San Diego closed all water contact recreation on its reservoirs because of COVID on March 18th, 2020. Eventually, the reservoirs did reopen the recreation later that year, but jet skiing on El Capitan is still prohibited. Even the hand-painted sign informing visitors that jet skiing is not allowed seems like a misspelled afterthought on the city-run lake. The city shuttered the water contact program uh, just prior to COVID, um, and they just are, um, are unwilling to explore any avenues of regaining access. As a result, if you want to jet ski on fresh water, we have to go to either Yuma or the Colorado River. San Diego budget documents from May of 2020 indicate the city wanted to save money by eliminating water contact sports on El Capitan Reservoir because it requires extra staffing. The city's recreation water permit makes it clear the state will allow jet skiing and water skiing on both El Capitan and San Vicente reservoirs, so the decision is up to the city's public utilities department. Their only real background is the purchase of water, the storing, the treatment, and the distribution of water. Former city employee Kevin Kidd Tackaberry says jet skiing is allowed on freshwater reservoirs up and down the state, but not in the city of San Diego. The issue is the city to date has said they don't want anything to do with it or they're unwilling to meet. And we're trying to bring solutions to work with them to make it work, to make it as cost neutral as possible. The city emailed me a statement saying, quote, jet skiing attendance at El Capitan could not support the staffing level necessary to ensure water safety in the event of misuse or accidents. So at this point, it's been three years since El Capitan Reservoir has been closed to water contact sports. A city spokesperson tells me they have no plans to reopen. At El Capitan Reservoir, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. A bill to protect abortion care in California is headed to Governor Gavin Newsom's desk. Senate President Pro Tem Tony Atkins of San Diego sponsored that bill. It would increase protections for providers that offer abortion procedures and gender affirming services. It passed in the state Senate 31 to 8 yesterday. The San Diego Humane Society says it's exploring legal options because 250 small animals they sent to Arizona are missing. Last month, the Humane Society transferred 318 animals to the Humane Society of Southern Arizona because our local shelters are over capacity. The Arizona shelter says it then transferred 250 of those animals to a small family owned rescue group, which adopted them out in a matter of weeks. Some rescuers here aren't buying it because they say it's difficult to find homes for small pets. That's unbelievable. Tell us how you did it. Please share your experience. What did you do to get at these animals placed that we're not doing? CBS 8 reached out to the Humane Society of Southern Arizona for comment, but haven't heard back. 
San Diego's enhanced hotspot program has cleared more than a thousand tons of waste from around homeless encampments. According to the city's environmental services department, the work was done in less than a year. It started as a pilot program last fall and became permanent this past spring. The city says crews work seven days a week cleaning sidewalks and streets adjacent to encampments. They do not clean up or clear encampments. Tonight, San Diego is among cities across the country suing Kia and Hyundai for failing to equip their vehicles with sufficient anti-theft technology. The city claims Kia and Hyundai vehicles are not equipped with engine mobilizers, which means they don't require a key or key fob to start the engine. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says Hyundai and Kia models from 2011 to 2022 share this same security flaw. We've seen an uptick of about 164% in vehicle thefts for Kia and Hyundai, which is all very avoidable. Last year, more than 250 Hyundais were stolen and more than 300 Kias were stolen in San Diego. So far, Kia and Hyundai have responded by developing free theft deterrent software for vehicles that lack immobilizers. CBSA teamed up with Palomar Medical Center for two blood drives this week, and if you haven't had a chance to donate, it's not too late to help save a life. Today's blood drive in Escondido was the second and last for this week, but the San Diego Blood Bank is always in need, and right now there is a desperate need for type O negative blood. That's the universal blood type. Uh, one pint of blood can save up to three lives. To make an appointment with the San Diego Blood Bank, you can visit the community page at cbs8.com. Still ahead, rising gas prices have more thieves targeting cars. We're going to show you how to protect yours. Plus, Apple unveils the iPhone 15 and a new Apple Watch, the features that set the new generation apart. A lot more sunshine in the forecast for today, and, well, those evenings are getting a little bit shorter. The sunset's going to be one minute before 7. We'll take a look at your complete forecast coming up. And a call for more pickleball courts in San Diego to meet the sudden surge in demand. Mm -hmm.